With so many types of light for filmmaking these days, it must be hard to pick which type to buy. Between tube lights, cob lights and LED panels, each one will have its benefits and I'm here to show you what they are. If I had to pick out a type of lights that is the most versatile, I would say they are tube lights. Stay tuned to find out why. And if you are new to this channel, do subscribe for more of such content in the future. Hey guys, what's up? My name is Bernard and welcome to the channel. So for today's video, we'll be comparing the different types of light there are for filmmaking. Do take note that I'm not saying that tube lights are the best. I'm just saying that they are the most versatile for my use case and they might be different for you, so take it with a pinch of salt. With Nanlite's release of the Power Tubes Mark II, I'm excited to finally add tube lights to my lighting kit. There are many upgrades to the Mark II over the Mark I and the price difference isn't that much. So if I were to make a recommendation, I would say just bite the bullet and invest in the Mark II. Anyways, with so many reviews out on YouTube talking about what the upgrades are, I decided to take a different approach and show you how tube lights perform in comparison to other lights. I would like to give a shout out to Camera Rental Centre Singapore because the only reason I can test out so many different lights is because they very kindly loaned them to me. They even allowed me to film this video in their studio. It was super convenient to not have to travel to another location after picking up the rental items, so do consider using their studio as well if you're ever renting items from them. For the test, I'll be using the different lights in common lighting situations and analysing the effect of each of them. I'll briefly share my thoughts and you guys can judge for yourself if you like the effect of each light. First up, we'll test each light as a key light. And the marks of a good key light is the ability to create soft light. And having a high output is a bonus. The Aperture 300D Mark II paired with the Light Dome 2 is my favourite. The light wraps around the subject nicely and the shadows are very soft. Also, the light output of this light is strong enough to be used in many situations. The downside is that a softbox is a separate accessory and everything adds up to be quite expensive. The entire setup is also heavy and bulky. For the second light, we are using the HR672S LED panel. This light doesn't come with any diffusion included as well. In a pinch, you can still use it as a key light without any accessories directly on your subject. But as you can see, it looks a little harsh and the shadows are very contrasty. However, you can use affordable materials like an umbrella or tracing paper to soften the light and it looks pretty good. Last but not least, we will be using the power tubes. This light on its own is soft and doesn't require any diffusion. It looks decent on the subject's face, but because of the shape of the light, it doesn't wrap around the subject's face as nicely. To summarize this segment, the best option for a key light without having to buy separate accessories is the tube light. However, the best look would go to the Aperture 300D with the light dome in my opinion. Pause the video if you need to carefully analyze the different scenes. Also, do take note that under certain circumstances, if your subject is backlit, you'll require a light with high output. So do take that into consideration when picking your key light. We will now move on to how each light looks as a backlight, starting with the Aperture 300D. This time, I swapped out the light dome for barn doors so I can get a harsher light and to shape the light better. I will also switch off the key light to show you exactly what the backlight does. The ability to shape the light to obtain the desired effect is a big bonus to me. Next, we will be using the HR762 LED panel without any accessories. When I turn on the backlight, you will be able to see the difference, but it is not as apparent as using the 300D. That is because cob lights without any diffusion tend to be harsher than LED panels. I personally prefer harsh light for backlighting because it creates more separation in the background, but certain situations might call for a softer light. Lastly, we have the power tubes. Because the light is soft, it has to be placed very close to the subject. Also, without the grid, the light spills everywhere as you can see. The good thing is that the light is relatively lightweight which makes it easier to mount it overhead your subject. To wrap up this segment, my favourite type of light for backlighting would be cob lights because I like the effect of harsh light on the subject and it is easier to shape the light. Let's now take a look at how each light lights up a background. With the 300D, it was a pretty bulky setup. In fact, you can see it popping into the frame. 
It also doesn't light up the background evenly. The HR762 did a good job lighting the background pretty evenly in my opinion. The power tubes have a pretty quick fall off which resulted in the top half of the background being darker than the bottom half. To conclude this segment, I would say that LED panels are the best lights for this purpose. But the power tubes can get the job done, but you'll need two or more to light the background evenly. So far, we have been lighting the scenes up with the lights out of frame. What happens if we use it as a practical? After looking at all the different shots, I think that only the tube lights look like they can blend into the scene naturally. All the other lights look like the gaffer made a mistake leaving his lights in the scene. I will now conclude this video with my purchase recommendation. I will buy cop lights with light modifiers if I want the best quality and price and portability is not an issue. I will get LED panels if portability is a priority and if I had budget constraints. I will get tube lights if I want a jerk of all trades light. Of course, the type of light that is the most versatile to you is based on your use case and it may not necessarily be the same as mine. That pretty much summarizes my thoughts on the different types of lights in the different lighting situations. Do let me know what you think. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you did. That's pretty much it for today. It's a wrap!